It seems that every man and his dog these days are trying to get into the 3D printing market with each successive machine offering more and more bells and whistles like interchangeable tool heads, integrated 3D scanner and killer industrial design. But are all these features actually all that useful? While it's true that some of the new features these days have proven invaluable, most of them just tend to be irrelevant and kind of, in my opinion, take away from what a 3D printer really should be, something that 3D prints well. But what if a manufacturer just stripped a 3D printer back all the way to the bare necessities? Well, the Cetus might just be that. Welcome back guys to Maker's Muse. So this is the Cetus from Cetus 3D. This is a pre-production unit sent to me by the company a few weeks ago in return for an unbiased review. The thing about the Cetus that grabbed my attention is its design. This machine is completely stripped back. There's nothing on here that doesn't serve a purpose. It's a form follows function approach, which I found quite frankly, pretty refreshing. Now I'm not saying the Cetus is ugly. I actually think it's pretty beautiful, but it's worlds away from other 3D printers we've seen so far this year that have added aesthetic details that wow the audience, but actually kind of distract from the core principles of the machine. As a designer, I would never put aesthetics first and that's why I really appreciate what Cetus has done here. In terms of specs, the Cetus has a build volume of 180 by 180 by 180 millimeters, which is pretty huge considering how small this machine actually is. And there's even an extended option which lets you build all the way up to 300 millimeters high. The machine itself takes 1.75 millimeter filament of the PLA variety, and it does not have a heated bed. So you will not be printing ABS on this machine. And talking about that unheated print bed, it has a really weird coating on it. Now, Cetus 3D won't tell me what that coating is, but in my opinion, it looks like some sort of rough plasticky coating like you'd get if you had like a really thick ABS juice and you put it onto Captain Tape. It has that kind of look and feel to it, but it does stick down the PLA prints really well. It does come with a price though. It is really rough. So if you're looking to print raftless prints, that texture will transfer onto the bottom of your print which is not something that I think many people would want. Now, personally, I'm quite happy printing with rafts, but a lot of people see it as a waste of material and time and rather print raftless. So that's just something to keep in mind. The bed itself has no mechanical leveling of any kind. It's got no springs or anything. It's literally just bolted down to the linear rail with four countersunk M3 screws. If you do need to level your bed, I haven't had to with mine, but if you do, you need to do it through the software interface. But wait a second, linear guide rails? Yeah, let's talk about those. Cetus has kicked the budget 3D printing market into overdrive by foregoing any kind of rods, rollers, or budget linear motion system and going straight to high wind linear rails. These rails are sick. They are extremely quiet in operation. Have very low run out and are kind of the backbone of how this cantilever design can even function. The cantilever design of the printer actually relies on these high quality rails to function. Each axis is controlled by a NEMA 17 driving belts. Even the Z axis has a belt and the print head's weight is loaded onto the rails. This approach means Cedars can cut costs and get away with far less hardware in its 3D printer, but it does sacrifice on rigidity. There is definitely going to be a lot more wobble in this design than a fully supported design 3D printer. And when the print head's fully extended to the limit of that rail, it has a lot of mass on it and it will wobble during printing. All that said though, the printer is extremely light and it seems to be quite happy being manhandled in sort of any orientation while it's printing. It just doesn't seem to care. The machine comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle as default, but it also comes with two other nozzles if you want to change them. A 0.6 for fast draft prints and a 0.2 millimeter nozzle for very fine detail, smaller prints. Keeping in mind 0.2 will take a lot longer to print than a 0.6, but if you need that detail, it's a nice touch for Cetus 3D to throw that in the box. And completing our tour of the machine, there is a single USB-A input and a DC power jack for the external DC power brick. Currently Cetus has its own slicing software and you can slice via USB and send it to the printer or via Wi-Fi. Both options cache to the printer. So once you're done, you can turn off the computer and not have to worry about that. You can also send files via your phone, which is really cool. And I can't show the app for that yet, but it will be in the final product. The machine can also recover from power loss, which is a feature we're seeing more and more in 3D printers these days. And something that's really quite handy when someone might just come along and bump 
the power jack out, or you might get a power cut. The machine will keep track of where it was, and when you plug it back into the computer, it will say, paused at certain layer height, would you like to continue? So that's a really nice feature if you're doing like a 20 hour print, which you could do in the extended version, and it gets halfway up and then the power dies. So I really do like that feature, and I'm glad it's included in a machine at this price point. However, I really would have liked to see some kind of filament sensing in the machine as well. As it stands, if the filament runs out, this machine will not know, and you're gonna get air printing. Come on guys, it's not, it's a, it's a switch. Please add it in. <laughs> Cetus 3D is promising compatibility in that Kickstarter campaign of third party slices like Cura or Simplify 3D, whatever you're comfortable with. And this is something that must happen. So I implore the Cetus 3D team to work on this really hard because as it stands, a proprietary slicer is quite looked down upon in the 3D printing community. You want something that's open where people can use something they're comfortable with to send files to your printer. A lockdown system will lock out various members of the community, in my opinion. Also, there's not any talk yet about being able to print from something like OctoPrint or any other cloud-based slicing program. So I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to do that, but if I find out any more information, I'll be sure to update you guys. All right, Angus, enough rambling. You're all saying we don't care about any more features. How does the Cetus print? Well, the Cetus prints extremely well, with a few caveats. Here's the thing, I tested the Cetus with four brands of PLA plastic. One was a house brand from 3D Printing Systems, another was the Hobby King's own brand of PLA plastic, the third was a complete no-name brand of PLA from that came with the Wanhao Duplicator 6, and the final one was this one which we're currently testing, which is the Poly Alchemy Elixir, which is really nice looking PLA modified plastic. The first test with the house brand 3D printing systems PLA worked beautifully. I have since lost those prints, however, since I moved to this new studio. The subsequent prints with the Polyalchemy Elixir did start working, but then started clicking. And this is something that I found interesting. So the prints would kind of work for a while, and then the print head would start clicking, and it would start failing. I then moved on to the Hobby King PLA, which also had the same issue. In fact, had even worse of time trying to print and would click and jam almost straight away. I then tried the Wenhal Duplicata 6 PLA and that worked beautifully for some reason. So what's going on here? These are different brands of PLA that I know for a fact work beautifully on other machines. Well, I think it has something to do with the extruder design. The Cetus has a all metal hot end with no PTFE lining. And I think this all metal hot end design doesn't work with all brands of PLA. I think some PLAs, when they soften, produce their own plug as it sort of sticks to the walls of the all metal hot end. And then the plastic's trying to force into itself, the pressure increases and the stepper motor clicks. So this might be able to be solved with an oiler. I haven't tested it yet. And again, once I test that, if I have any good results, I'll share them back with you guys. But it's certainly an interesting situation because as you can see with this print, I printed with the orange, it started clicking, changed over to the no-name brand PLA that the Wenhao came with, and it printed beautifully. So most of my test prints were actually done with this PLA. As I said, I don't know who made it, it's just made in China, but it works well on the Cetus. But moving on past that, the print quality in the PLAs that worked is phenomenal. So this is a cat from the Scan the World Initiative over at My Mini Factory and it is so cute, it is perfect. So it's 150 micron layer heights and there was support material and a raft. And as I said, the support material structure and raft on the Cetus broke away just awesomely by hand, no issues, no tools needed, I just pulled them off. And what's really nice about this print is clearly cooling is not an issue, it is very sharp and the little holes for the nose, it's it's so hard to see. I don't know if I'll be able to show it on camera. Holes for the nose and ears came out beautifully. So in terms of print quality, even though it's a cantilever design, it seems to not really have much of an issue with fine details like that. I also tried some big prints. So this is a very large part of a spool holder. Ah, got you there. So the Cetus is so stripped back that there is literally no room for a spool holder on it. There is no room to put one, it would interfere with the movements or it would put unnecessary weight onto the gantry. So Cetus is coming up with an external spool holder, but if you buy this machine, I would highly recommend just printing your own design of Thingiverse, which is what I've started to do here. So this is almost the full size of the bed in PLA plastic, and there is a tiny amount of warping. Nothing serious, nothing that most people would notice, 
but PLA can warp. And on a non-heated bed, you can still get warping with PLA plastics. So that's something to keep in mind. You may need to run that software bed leveling compensation to get your seaters dialed in. Now, as I said, mine from the factory came pretty much set, ready to go. I haven't had to change anything. The leveling is awesome, but still full size PLA can still warp a bit. Just something to keep in mind. And finally, I did my tried and true torture test, which is here where I changed plastic from the, the Hobby King in the raft to the Wan Hao plastic PLA. And it is awesome. All the columns printed beautifully. I haven't touched it yet, so they're not broken yet. And the little side fins, the smallest, which is the 0.4, did not print, so it was ignored in software. But the rest is great. The, the, the point with the 45 degree angle is sharp. The underside is sharp and the peak is actually pretty good too. Much better than many other machines when printing PLA, which means this machine has fantastic cooling when it comes to small details. So taking a look at their Kickstarter campaign, I'll be honest with you guys, it's not the most polished I've ever seen and the Kickstarter video will probably put a few of you guys off backing this project. But let me tell you, the Cetus printer is backed by humongous manufacturing capability. So to be honest, their Kickstarter campaign is more like a pre-order rather than an actual funding of a development of a new product and that's backed by how soon their delivery date is. But the proof's in the pudding, guys. This machine's in front of me, it's a pre-production unit and you wouldn't be able to tell it from a retail version in my opinion. So, take of that what you like. Something fairly interesting as well is Cetus 3D are talking about a pre-authorization system within their software for files so they can't be stolen or distributed without permission. So DRM or digital rights management is one of those things that sort of des deserves its own whole other video. I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but in my personal opinion, you can't stop the signal. So in terms of protecting digital files, yes, there is a way to do it. The music industry has finally settled on stuff like Spotify, but that's really more of a catering towards people's laziness thing rather than stopping them from stealing things. Alrighty guys, final thoughts on the Cetus 3D printer. Well, we haven't talked about price yet. The early bird price for this printer is $199 US plus shipping and tax. That is bonkers. A printer that's got linear rails, metal construction, build, build volume that's almost as large as a Wan Hao i3 for 200 bucks US is pretty much unheard of. Full size motors as well, by the way, not pissy little geared stepper motors. And if you guys are subscribed to Make This Music, you would have noticed this came up a day before their campaign launches. So you get first pick of early bird. It's limited to 400 backers. The extended version does bring the price up to 329 US, but you do get that extra sort of, it's a 300 millimeter height, which is pretty cool. It's a lot more expensive than the, the standard version, but really that's a lot of build volume for not that much money realistically. I do really commend Cetus for this bold statement they've put forward. You know, stripping a 3D printer all the way back when everyone else in the market is just adding more stuff in is really different and refreshing to me. But at the same time, there's some weird, not very good choices in my opinion here. I mean, the print surface does work but you can't print raftless on this. And a lot of people who like to print raftless will not be happy with this choice. It also, the, the inability to work with some PLAs is, is strange, especially when it's a PLA only machine. An all metal hot end is not necessary. You could go to a PTFE lining and make it compatible with pretty much every other PLA. And the proprietary nature of it, in all the internals are proprietary, you can't really hack them or change them, which might put some people off as well. But if you're in the market for a 3D printer and you've been waiting for the price to come down or you're, you're strapped for cash, you're running a school environment or a work environment and you want something that will work out of the box and print pretty big, like fairly large compared to something in the similar price point, then by all means, I'd say go for it. I mean, this machine ticks all the boxes in terms of a large print volume, useful features, Wi-Fi and uh, power loss recovery, super useful, and quality. I mean, linear rails, I keep going back to that. This is the first machine I've seen at this price point to do that, which is pretty cool. So a huge thanks to Cetus 3D for sending me this 3D printer to review. As I said, guys, they just sent it to me for an unbiased review. No money has changed hands and I just wanted my opinion and for me to make a video for you guys. If you wanna see future 3D printing content here on Make This Muse, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a massive amount. I love bringing you this content and you notice this is a brand new studio and it's only been able to get this secured because of your support. I highly value you guys. I really do appreciate that you take the time out of your day to watch my videos and I'll see you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Here's the latter half of the 20th century. And man has
has been brought into the deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.